Welcome to the Inamena video tutorial. This session is about thermal energy storage. My name is Wolf-Thierry Steinmann. I'm working at DLR for more than 15 years now in the field of CSP and the development of thermal energy storage systems. This module about heat storage systems for concentrated solar power is divided into five main sections. In the first section, the motivation for the implementation of thermal energy storage systems will be clarified. The next section describes various criteria which can be used for the classification of storage systems. Within the section about basic concepts, the main types of storage systems will be introduced and their state of development will be given. Storage technology is currently transferred from CSP to other application areas. Examples for this transfer will be given in the next section. This transfer affects also developments for applications in the CSP area. In the final section, current research and development activities will be described. Storage units increase the efficiency of energy systems by compensating the temporal mismatch between available energy and the demand for energy. Storage represents an additional option for increased energy management. The option to integrate storage capacity locally is a unique feature of CSP technology. The annual solar energy production can be increased by adding storage capacity. The efficiency of the power cycle can be improved by avoiding part load behavior. Storage allows the adaptation of electricity production to the demand structure. Dispatchability is mandatory if the share of renewable energies should be increased. Various criteria can be used to classify storage systems. Besides storage capacity and thermal power, the operation temperature and the response time must be considered if various storage systems should be compared. The parasitic power needed and the extent of thermal losses to the environment must be also known to evaluate the quality of a storage system. The integration of storage systems into CSP systems requires the adaptation of the chosen storage concept to both the solar receiver on one side and the power cycle on the other side. Different requirements result here from the operation temperature of the receiver system and the working fluids used as heat transfer media. Due to this wide spectrum of requirements, a significant number of storage concepts have been developed for specific CSP applications. There is no single storage concept that can be considered as the best solution for all applications. Liquid water represents the best working fluid for sensible heat storage for temperatures below 100 degree. In order to extend the operation temperature, liquid water can be pressurized. This is done in steam accumulators, where steam is fed into a pressurized liquid water volume. The steam is condensed and transfers energy to the liquid water volume. During discharge, saturated steam is provided by the system. The energy needed to generate saturated steam is taken from the sensible heat of the liquid volume. Pressure and temperature of the saturated steam provided during discharge is lowered. Steam accumulators are preferred as buffer storage used for providing power for a short period. The capacity-specific costs are dominated for the expense for the pressure vessels and increase significantly at higher temperatures. An exemplary application for steam accumulators are the PS10 and PS20 power plants, which use saturated steam as working fluid produced in a central receiver. Steam accumulators are used to operate the power blocks during a period of about 50 minutes at 50% power. Main components of these storage systems are for pressure tanks filled with liquid water. Steam accumulators have been chosen for the PS10 plan since this was the only commercially available storage concept available at the beginning of the construction. Two tank molten salt storage represent today's state of the art in commercial storage systems for CSP plants. Except for the PS10 and PS20 power plants, all commercial CSP facilities use two-tank molten salt technology. There are two different basic options for the implementation of two-tank molten salt storage systems. In direct storage systems, molten salt is used both as heat transfer fluid in the solar absorbers and as storage material. Indirect storage systems use two separate loops. The heat transfer fluid in the absorbers is different from the molten salt used in the storage systems. The decision between direct and indirect systems depends on the operation temperature of the CSP facility. In today's parabolic trough systems, thermal oil is used in the absorbers, so two separate loops are used. In central receivers, 
Molten salt is also used as HDF in the receiver, so direct storage can be applied. The first large-scale implementation of two-tank molten salt storage system was the Solar 2 research project. During the 1990s, hot molten salt from a central receiver was stored directly at a temperature of 565 degrees. This storage system shows a thermal capacity of 90 megawatt hours, allowing a storage based operation for a duration of three hours. The temperature difference between hot and cold tank was 275 degrees. The main components of the storage systems were two tanks with a diameter of 12 meters and a height of 8 meters. The total amount of storage material was 1,400 tons of an eutectic mixture of sodium nitrate and potassium nitrate. An indirect molten salt storage system was first implemented in the undersold power plants. Here, oil is used as HDF and the energy is transferred to the salt via a heat exchanger during the charging process. During discharge, the energy is transferred again from the molten salt to the thermal oil. The thermal oil is then used to generate steam. The temperature difference between hot and cold tank is in the range of about 90 degrees. So the mass-specific storage capacity is in the range of about one-third of the Solar 2 system. This picture shows an exemplary implementation of an indirect two-tank molten salt storage system at the undersold power plants. A total mass of more than 28,000 tons is needed to provide a thermal capacity of about 1 gigawatt hour, allowing the operation of a 50 megawatt CSP plant for about 7 hours. While two-tank molten salt storage system can be considered as a low-risk approach, there are several specific aspects which have to be considered during the design. The selection of the salt system is decisive for the design since the operation temperature results from the freezing point and the maximum allowed temperature of the salt. Important for systems using molten salt is the consideration of corrosion aspects. While failures resulting from corrosion must be avoided in any case, oversizing of the wall thickness increases the cost of the system significantly. So detailed knowledge about the corrosion process is important for a cost-effective design. Detailed knowledge about the heat transfer mechanism to the environment is also important for a cost-effective design. The cost for the insulation should be compared against the efficiency losses. Special care must be paid to the initial filling procedure. The molten salt must be kept always at temperatures above 250 degrees. Today's most popular molten salt system is a mixture of potassium nitrate and sodium nitrate. System using this mixture could be operated in a temperature range between 220 degree and 600 degree. Another commercially available molten salt is the high-tech salt showing a lower melting point of about 142 degree. The maximum allowed temperature is also lower than for the solar salt. The costs for high-tech are higher than the cost for the solar salt. There are also other salt mixtures which are considered as heat transfer fluids, but usually the costs are too high for an application as storage materials. The cost and the properties of the molten salt determines the characteristics of a two-tank molten salt storage system. Significant improvements of the two-tank molten salt systems are only possible by applying improved salt systems. The current research on two-tank molten salt systems focuses on the identification of cost-effective alternative salt systems. While a low freezing temperature is important, other aspects that should be considered are thermal stability within a wide temperature range, low vapor pressure and a low viscosity to limit pumping power. Corrosion plays an important role in the design of two-tank molten salt storage systems. A detailed knowledge is important for cost-effective design. Since corrosion is strongly dependent on the molten salt temperature, the design of the cold tank is usually different from the design of the hot tank. While carbon steel is suitable up to 400 degrees, stainless steel is needed for operation temperatures exceeding 400 degrees. The purity of the salt also affects the corrosion rate. A cost optimization should be done for the qualities of the salt and the steel. The corrosion rate is affected by many factors apart from the salt purity and the steel composition. The operation conditions also show a significant effect. Specific aspects have to be considered during the construction of the tanks and the foundations. Molten salt is delivered in large 
bags which must be stored near to the construction site. Care must be taken to avoid consolidation of hard blocks. Both tanks should be erected below the ground, since in case of leakage, the whole salt volume should be contained in the low-level area. The concrete foundation should not be at temperatures exceeding 100 degrees. So the temperature can be here decreased by natural convection systems or by force convection. The main cost of a two-tank molten salt system result from the costs of the molten salt. An alternative could be here to replace a part of the molten salt by an alternative, cheaper filling material. This approach is done by the so-called thermocline approach. Here, a solid material is filled into the storage tank and replaces a part of the molten salt. The cost reduction potential is considered to be in the range of about 33%. While this approach has been demonstrated in experiments, there is no long experience available for this approach so far. Current developments in the area of two-tank molten salt storage system focus on the identification of new salt mixtures. These salt mixtures should be cost-effective. They should be able to be operated at temperatures at least 700 degrees, and they should show a lower melting point in range of less than 140 degrees. The research for these new systems focus on ternary systems with three components, and on systems with even more components. Another approach is the enhancement of the heat capacity by addition of nanoparticles. An alternative approach to bring down the cost of the storage material is to use solid storage media instead of molten salt as storage media. An attractive candidate material here is the use of concrete as storage material. For these systems, the heat transfer fluid is different from the storage medium. Low-cost storage material are used in combination with an integrated heat exchanger. There is no risk of solidification. The design is modular and can be scalable easy. Analysis show that an economic and reliable thermal energy storage system could be implemented as cost less than 35 euro per kilowatt hour. Another advantage is the option to use construction materials which are available at the construction sites. Thermal energy storage using concrete as storage material has been demonstrated in the pilot scale. A 400 kilowatt storage unit is in operation since May 2008. The storage capacity is in the range of 0.65 kilowatt hours per cubic meter per Kelvin. The pilot scale of unit has been operated for more than 10,000 hours now. So far, no indication of any degradation effects have been identified. Solid storage materials are also preferred for solar tower plants using air as a heat transfer media. The regenerator storage is here the suitable heat storage technology. The setup is simple and it allows low cost storage materials. A direct contact between the air and the storage material is possible and decreases the temperature difference between the working fluid and the storage material. And there is a very high upper temperature limit available. The first demo storage demonstrating the regenerator heat storage technology with a power of 9 megawatt thermal has been erected as a solar tower plant in Jülich and is operating as 1.5 megawatt electric power cycle. Sensible storage materials are preferred for solar tower plants with air as a working media. Several challenges have to be met. An important question is the durability of inexpensive storage materials. Another aspect is the containment technology and the insulation of this containment. Due to the increase 
of the temperature in the storage material, significant thermomechanical stress occurs within the storage material. Another aspect is the distribution of the flow through the storage material. Basically, concept for energy storage can be divided into two groups. The storage system shown so far belong to the sensible heat storage systems. These systems have a commercial or pre-commercial status. Sensible heat storage are steam accumulators, two tank molten salt storage system or solid media storage systems. In contrast to these sensible heat storage system, there are also storage systems for latent heat. The motivation for the development of latent heat storage systems is the demand for a storage system that is able to store energy at a constant temperature. If water is used as a heat transfer media in the absorbers, a large fraction of the energy is transferred at constant temperature during the evaporation process. The storage system must now be able to store the energy at constant temperature during the condensation process. In a typical direct steam generation process, about 65% of the energy is transferred by wet steam during the condensation or the evaporation. And the storage system must be able to store this energy at a constant temperature. Constant heat energy storage can be implemented by using latent heat storage material. Here, the energy associated with the phase change of the storage material is used for energy storage. Candidate materials for the temperature range exceeding 100 degrees are nitrate salts. Important criteria for the selection of PCM criteria are the thermal conductivity, the heat capacity, the thermal stability, the material costs, corrosion, and the hygroscopy. All cost-effective latent heat storage materials show very low thermal conductivities. The main problem for the design of a latent heat storage system is the implementation of a heat transfer system that provides sufficient power during the charging and especially during the discharging process. During the discharging process, a solid layer forms around the heat transfer area. The task is now to transfer the energy from the phase change through this solid layer. Different approaches have been developed to ensure a sufficient high thermal heat transfer. One option here is to use fins that are integrated into the storage material. The fins transfer the energy from the storage volume to the heat transfer area. In recent years, the feasibility of latent heat energy storage systems for CSP have been demonstrated at various power levels and capacities. Whereas nitrate salts with melting points between 142 degree and 305 degree have been used as PCM. Heat transfer enhancement has been done in these systems by fins made either by graphite or by aluminium. Five PCM modules have been tested with a storage mass between 140 kg and 2,000 kg. DLR has designed and operated the world's largest PCM storage module with a storage mass of 14 tons of sodium nitrate showing a thermal capacity of 700 kilowatt hours. This PCM storage was connected to a sensible heat storage unit using concrete as storage medium. The aim is here to provide superheated steam during the discharge process. This combination shows a capacity of 1 megawatt hour and provides steam at 100 bars and 400 degrees C. This picture shows the filling of storage materials into the container of the PCM storage unit. There is also a growing interest of using medium and high temperature energy storage also in non-solar applications. 
This is also an advantage for CSP since the increasing demand in this technology also enhances the development of storage systems for CSP. An example for the non-solar use is adiabatic compressed air energy storage, a technology intended for electricity storage. Energy storage systems are used here to store energy from the compression process. Other examples for non-solar use of energy storage are applications in the process heat industry or combined heat and power plants where storage systems can decouple the production of heat and electricity. Storage systems have also been suggested to facilitate the generation of electricity from raised heat. Current research activities in the area of storage technology focus mainly on two aspects, namely reduction of costs and improvement of operability. An analysis of today's storage systems for sensible heat show that for both two-tank molten salt storage and solid media storage systems, there is a single component that dominates the costs. For molten salt, this is the investment for the molten salt. For solid media energy storage, the costs are dominated by the expenses for the heat exchanger. In both cases, a significant reduction of these dominant cost factors seems not possible. As a result, a new basic storage concept is needed. Solid storage media concepts are attractive since the costs for the storage material are significantly lower than for molten salt systems and there is no risk of freezing. In order to bring down the costs for the heat exchanger, several requirements for a new storage concept are identified. Large heat transfer surfaces are needed to shorten the path lengths for heat conduction within the low conductivity solid storage material. Direct contact between storage medium and working fluid should be possible since this avoids expensive piping or coating. And the storage volume should be at atmospheric pressure to avoid expensive pressure vessels. The new storage solution uses air as an intermediate heat transfer fluid. In a closed air cycle, the energy is transferred from a heat exchanger to a per solid medium storage volume. There are several problems which result from the properties of air. Due to the low volume-specific energy densities, large air volumes must be transferred. Transferring large air volumes requires significant pumping power. Part load operation is difficult. The solution proposed by DLR is to use many parallel air cycles instead of a single large one. The complete storage unit is composed of many storage units, which include a closed air cycle, a heat exchanger and a solid medium storage volume. This concept is named self-flux storage concept. This picture shows the integration of the self-flux storage concept into a CSP plant. A storage unit is composed of various storage units which are operated in parallel. Another solid media storage concept under development uses sand as storage material. Like in the two-tank molten salt storage system, the storage material is stored at two different temperatures. The energy is transferred to the working fluid of the receiver and the power block by heat exchangers. Another storage concept under development is the use of non-eutectic salt mixtures as storage material. Here the phase transition takes place over a wider temperature range. Within this temperature range, the effective specific heat capacity is higher than for other sensible storage media. Systems of non-eutectic storage materials can be cascaded to extend the operation temperature range. Another approach for storage of thermal energy is the use of reversible chemical reactions for energy storage. For this concept, a high volumetric storage density is expected. Coming to the conclusions, the adaptation of storage systems to the characteristics of the concentrator system and the power block is essential. There is no single storage concept that can be considered as optimal solution for all CSP applications. The evaluation of storage systems requires the consideration of various criteria like capacity, power, temperature level, response time, parasitics and thermal losses. Direct and indirect two-tank molten salt storage systems represent today's standard solution for CSP facilities using single-phase HDF. PCM storage systems using fin tubes embedded in the storage material have reached a pre-commercial status. There are new storage solutions using solid storage media which aim at further cost reductions. We acknowledge the financial support of the Enamena project by the German Federal Foreign Office. Thank you for your attention.